What's up squeegee slingers and water fed pole wiggling wagglers and welcome back to the Tradman YouTube channel. Today we're discussing about how to earn a good wage traditional window cleaning. Some hints and tips are really going to help you to get that wage up a bit better than maybe it currently is. So let's delve into it. Right then folks, we're gonna talk about four areas where you could maybe possibly improve or change to try and get your wage up a wee bit, especially in these times where things are starting to cost quite a bit more. So let's delve into point number one, appearance. So yeah, let's talk appearance. And I've got three little sections under this topic. The first one is our personal appearance, looking smart. That can really make a huge difference to people actually choosing you when they see you physically working or not. If you're in grubby old looking trousers or ripped hoodies or whatever it may be, then they're more likely probably to go for someone that looks a little bit more professional. So when funds allow, try and get smart work attire. If you can, try and get your logo on jackets or jumpers, your trousers and things like that. Try and look the part and you're more likely to get hired by better clients if you really look the part. So we've discussed point number one, our personal appearance, let's make sure that's looking good, but also point number two under appearance is our digital appearance. So let's make an effort when we get to things like Facebook, Instagram, or having a website if funds allow, those are things that will really make us look very good and very professional. So don't skimp when it comes to our digital appearance, put some time and effort in and try and make yourself look as good as you possibly can online with photos and videos and how you describe you and your company. And lastly, under appearance, I'd like to talk about your vehicle, just keeping that looking in good condition. Now I know we can't always afford the best thing, maybe the newest vehicle, but even just keeping our current vehicle, whether it's a car, a van, a truck, whatever it is that you use, keep it nice and clean and presentable, both in and out. Now, why in as well? Well, sometimes a customer, potential client, might approach your vehicle to ask for a quotation, and if you open the door to say hello, and it's full of crisps and snacks and all sorts of stuff lying around, and it just doesn't particularly look very good, then obviously as a cleaning business, they might judge you in a negative way if you're not particularly very clean in your vehicle. The same goes for the outside of the vehicle. We're a cleaning business. So try and keep your vehicle in a nice clean tip top condition. So that way people are more likely to judge you in a favorable way if you've got a nice clean vehicle in and out and it's nice and organized as well. So that's appearance, our personal, digital and vehicle. Let's put some effort in, spend some time on those areas and get ourselves looking as good as we can in those different departments. So in area number two, we're gonna talk about the price. Now this is crucial. So we need to make sure because we're doing things traditionally that quite often can take a wee bit longer than using perhaps the water fed pole method, especially when we get to the higher up kind of windows. It does take time to get up nose to glass on those occasions. So make sure you price it properly. Now what normally happens to a product when somebody or manufacturer says that it is done by hand? Well, the price normally goes up, doesn't it? So similarly with your window cleaning, if you're doing it by hand and the job is going to take you longer, then make sure that you price it properly and for the length of time it's going to take you. So for me, I actually charge more for a traditional clean than I do for a water-fed pole clean. Now I know that obviously there's a lot more cost involved with a water-fed pole, particularly if you live in a hard water area, but for me, once that initial cost has been paid for, then it's my time that's really costing the money. Now, obviously doing things traditionally is gonna cost you a lot of time. So we want to make sure we're charging properly, otherwise we're really gonna be chasing our tails, running up and down those ladders, and not particularly coming away with a great wage. So always price it a little bit more than what you think, and try and give yourself some breathing room so you're not having to run around like a headless chicken trying to make a good hourly or a daily rate. So also in conjunction with pricing, try and view yourself as a luxury service. That's what it is. Window cleaning is not a need, it's not a necessity for someone to pay you to go and do their windows. They can live without it, it's a luxury service. So try and get that into your mind when you're pricing a job. You don't have to be paid peanuts, you are a luxury 
service. So make sure you keep that in mind when you go to price things, know your own self-worth and what your services are worth. Area number three is your tools. Make sure you try and get the most professional tools that you can. If you get really cheap, tacky things, well, the results are not gonna be overly great. So make sure you pick a mainstream brand, things like Unger, Ettore, or even some of the Mormon tools, things like that. Try and pick a brand that you know is gonna be good, reliable, dependable tools that will give you a quality finish. So don't skimp on your tools. And now the good thing about traditional is that it doesn't cost overly too much to get really good tools. Unlike Waterfed Pole, the initial startup cost of traditional is very, very low. So make sure you don't skimp on those traditional tools and get the best you possibly can. Area number four, our final area, is the technique and skill with our tools. Now, one of the other key elements along with pricing is how good we are with our tools. If you're quite slow or you're always fixing mistakes, then that is going to cost you time, which in turn costs you money. So make sure you practice as much as you can, whether it's on your own home windows, friends or family, before you venture out and you try and do it on customers' windows. Over time, you will get better as you, more you practice, you'll develop your own way of doing things to try and speed you up. But whatever you do, don't also skimp on the quality. Don't trade speed for quality. Try and get that happy medium between being quite quick and efficient, but also leaving a good quality job. Because at the end of the day, the better job that you do, your name will get around, your reputation will build as a good quality traditional window cleaner, but also you yourself, can make a good daily and hourly rate if you're very good at it. So do your best to master your trades, stick in, keep practicing. It can be a little bit tricky at first, but honestly, keep practicing. You will get better over time. And I do hopefully have a few videos that will be able to help you out. So check out the playlists. So hopefully some of these points will benefit you today. Now this is also applicable to really any kind of business when it comes to your appearance and pricing it right and getting the right equipment. You could equally say that that applies to most trades to be honest, but particularly with traditional, make sure you price it right. You're a luxury service, you're doing it by hand, you're getting nose to glass. It's gonna take you a wee bit longer than maybe other methods. So make sure you price it right. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video guys. You take care, be good. Oh, and remember, keep squeegee slinging.